Some 1100 years ago, long ships sailing along the coast and the blare of war horns were common sights and noises for the people of Kent. Because of its geographic location on the eastern tip of England, the country was a popular target for Viking raids, who found the bounty and offered to be too enticing to pass up. Welcome to the Vikings Code, and today we will be looking back at the history of Viking raids in Kent, and how the Saxons shaped the country. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's continue. The term Viking comes from an Old Norse word that means pirate raid, and while most Saxons referred to the invaders as Danes, they came from all around Scandinavia, mostly Norway and Sweden, but also Denmark. Although it was a source of income for many Vikings, the opportunity to raid and plunder was also a means of providing for their families and establishing new settlements, which were expanding as many Norse and Danes were farmers, seeking more productive lands to live off of rather than the harsh conditions of their native homelands. Even after being attacked by the Vikings, Kent remained a relatively successful and rich county thanks to a combination of the country's topography and the existence of the church which served as a focal point for commerce and culture. While only a small amount of archaeological evidence of Viking activity has been discovered in Kent, historical documents chronicle massive attacks, with one of the first notable episodes taking place on the Isle of Sheppey in 835. Attacks on Kent had been ongoing for decades, with the oldest records indicating that Danes arrived in the country as early as the 750s. During the 14th hundreds, Thomas of Elam, a monk at St. Augustine's Abbey, remembers Vikings pillaging the nunnery at Minister in Thanet in 753, according to the Abbey's Chronicles. The Saxon Chronicles record an increase in the number of landings and attacks during the 9th century. The Vikings attacked the cities of Rochester and Canterbury, as well as monasteries which were often built on exposed coastal locations over the course of many decades. Since the initial attacks, armies became regular visitors for more than 150 years. Cathedrals and monasteries were considered easy targets since the nuns and monks were typically unarmed and in possession of precious goods such as silver and priceless manuscripts. The nuns from Lyminge were allowed sanctuary behind the city walls of Canterbury in 804 because of the ravaging hordes of Viking invaders that had encircled the city. In 811, a peasant army was recruited on the Isle of Sheppey to attempt to fend against tented invaders who had taken up camp. It was during this period that Viking forces fortified the northern coast of England and camped on both Sheppey and the Isle of Thanet, both of which were cut off from the mainland by the Wansom Channel, which was up to two miles wide in places and protected at either end by the Roman forts of Richborough and Reculver. Several further campaigns were documented in Kent between 841 and 865, including one in Romney Marsh. Battles were also fought in Rochester in 842, Canterbury and Sandwich in 851, and Thanet in 853. With their Roman walls still standing as layers of defense, the fortified towns of Canterbury and Rochester came under siege by resurgent Viking forces during the mid-9th century, especially the Great Heathen Army, commanded by the sons of Ragnar Lothbrok in 865. However, despite the Viking raiders being promised Danegeld, currency and return for peace, after spending the winter in Thanet, they wreaked havoc in the east of the county. During the reign of King Alfred of Wessex, Rochester was encircled twice, the second time by an army headed by King Alfred himself, who was able to repel the attackers. By 892, Alfred had effectively unified a large portion of the kingdoms and shires of southern England. In response to a deal signed with the Norse chieftain Guthrum that awarded Vikings lands in East Anglia, he repulsed the Vikings who had taken up camp in Kent. However, there were several other Viking tribes and clans eager to take advantage of the county's wealth, and Kent was thrown into disorder and turbulence as conflict and disaster loomed over the county that year. Anyone familiar with the Netflix series The Last Kingdom, based on Bernard Cornwell's novels, will recognize the name Haston. Haston had gathered a massive force in northern France, and in the same year, more than 250 ships sailed from Boulogne, landing on the marshes near Appledore, which is located between Ashford and Rye. When the army arrived, they stormed the neighboring St. Rumwell's Church in Bonington, where they found 10,000 warriors and their families. According to the Chronicles, everyone who was inside the church was slain. That year, an additional 80 ships docked at Milton Regis, near Sittingbourne, in the northern part. It was decided to divide Alfred's army between the two Viking groups to protect the combined Kent and Wessex throne. Although it has never been definitively proven where the event took place, historians assume it occurred at Maidstone because the Saxons had constructed a crossing point over the river Medway there and because the town's hillside location gave a strategic advantage. The Saxon and Viking era came to an end with the Norman conquest in 1066, which brought in a new age of laws and traditions across Europe. So this ends today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or thoughts, please let us know in the comments section. Stay tuned with us and we'll see you in the next one.